Okay, next we're going to check out markers and regions in Reaper. Now the purpose of markers is to mark sections of our song. Like right now, it's hard to tell where we are in the song. If we scroll through it, it all kind of looks the same. So using markers to mark our song sections makes it a lot easier. So let's do that. Let's say at bar 2, this is the intro. Just click over here. Bar 2, and notice snapping is on, making it easier for our markers to be on the bar, like bar 3 and bar 2. So let's go to the menu to insert, and right here we could add a marker. And the key command for it is the letter M. But we could also do a marker where it prompts for the name. And this key command is Shift M. So if we just hit M, it creates a marker. But if we hit Shift M, it adds a marker, but we can name it, like Intro. And now we have a marker right at bar 2 named Intro. Let's put another one at bar 4, but let's right click instead, and we can insert a marker this way. We'll name this Verse 1. Now we have another marker. Let's make one more at bar 6. Shift M, name it Chorus 1, and now we have three markers, making it a lot easier to see what part of the song we're in. This is the intro, this is verse 1, and this is Chorus 1. Now we can edit our markers by simply grabbing them and dragging them around. Move the verse here or here. We could also right click to re edit it, change the name, change the position. We could delete it by right clicking and choose Remove Marker. Or on the PC, hold on Alt. On the Mac, hold on Option and just click it and it deletes them. Now each marker has a marker ID. So if we right click the first one, go to edit, we can see right over here the ID for the intro is number one. And over here on verse one, the ID is number two. And this one is three. You can also see the number right in there one, two, and three. This is useful because we can jump to our markers using our computer keyboard. Not the numerical keys on the right, but the QWERTY side above the letters. We can hit 1, and our cursor moves to mark a 1. Hit 2, it moves to mark a 2. Hit 3, it moves to mark a 3. So it's a quick way of navigating to each of our song sections. Now we could also scroll from one to another. If we hit the bracket keys next to the P, we could scroll back one marker or forward, depending on which bracket we hit. We hit the left one, it goes back. Hit the right one, it goes forward. And finally, we could jump to markers by going to the transport and right clicking and choose jump to marker. From here, we could choose our intro, our verse, or our chorus. Let's go to verse 1, and our cursor jumps back to verse 1. It's just a great way of navigating to our song sections. Now we could also change colors of our markers. Let's double click them, which will also allow us to edit it, and go here to set the marker color. Click it, let's make it yellow, let's make this marker. green, and we'll keep this marker red. So now we can tell by color what part of the song we're in. The intro is yellow, the verses are green, and the choruses could be red. Now we can double click in between two markers in our ruler, 
and that automatically selects the space between each marker, between the intro and verse 1, verse 1 and chorus 1, chorus 1 to the rest of the song. We could do it up here as well. Double click, it creates a time selection between the two markers, right up here, here, or here, or in the bottom half of the ruler. Now we could also add markers during playback. If we hit play and hit M on the fly, it's going to create markers while the song is playing in those spots. So let's do that. So now we created three markers on the fly. Now by hitting M, it doesn't prompt to name them, but we could do that if we want by hitting Shift M. And then it prompts for us to name it on the fly. So it's a great way of creating markers even while the song is running. Now if snapping is turned on over here, let's right click it. And this option over here is turned on, snap media items to selection markers and cursor. If this is selected, then our items are going to snap to our markers. So even if we had one that's not on the grid, like over here, and we turn snapping on, we can move this item and it's going to snap to that marker. And finally, we could delete all our markers by double clicking over here to select everything, right clicking, and choose Remove All Markers from Time Selection. Our time selection is the whole song, so if we choose this, it removes all markers. Now let's check out regions. Regions are similar to markers as it's used to label song sections, but the difference is it's based on an area, not on a point. So we can create a region based on the section from bar two to bar four. This can be a region. So we can go to insert and we can insert a region from our time selection. We could also do it from the key command, Shift R, and it creates a region right up here. We can name it by right clicking, choose to edit the region, and let's call this the intro. Let's make another one over here from bar four to six. We'll right click and choose create region from selection. Again, we can name this. Verse 1. And this time, we use the key command. From here to here, Shift R. And again, we'll name it Chorus 1. So now, just like with our markers, we have these sections all labeled Intro, Verse 1, and Chorus 1. Now we can add color to our regions to make them stand out more. Let's right click. Edit the region, and let's give this a color. We'll make this yellow. We'll make this one green. And we'll make this one red. So now they stand out based on that color. So all our verses could be green, all the choruses could be red, and the intros could be yellow. Now we could edit the regions just by grabbing them over here. Change the size of them. Adjust from here to here. Make this smaller and this one bigger. Right now they're snapping to our grid, but they don't have to. We could turn this off and they don't snap. We could delete the regions by right clicking, and we could remove them right here, or we could use a modifier. Hold down Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac and just click it, and we could delete them just like that. Now, if we double click them right here, it automatically makes a time selection based on the size of that region. We can click over here or in the ruler. 
and it creates a time selection exactly the size of that region, making it easier to edit. If we just want to edit the verse and delete the snare, we could do it just like that. But where regions get really powerful is for arranging our song. Let me show you this, but first, let's create some empty items. Now, we don't have to do this. I just want to do it to make it easier to see what's going on. So I'll make a new track, put it at the top. We'll double click this region and we'll insert an empty item. Right here, we can double click it, give it a name. We'll call it intro. We'll stretch the text to fit the item. So it shows up over here. You can make it bigger or smaller. Let's duplicate it over this section, but rename it based on this region. Verse one. And we'll do the same thing for our chorus. And let's color it the same color as our regions. Make this yellow. Make this green. And we'll make this red. You don't have to do this. I just made these items so it's easy to see what section we're working with. This is our intro, this is verse one, and this is chorus one. So now we can grab our regions and move them around. So we can grab this right here, verse one, and put it before our intro. And not only does the region move, but all the items in that region also move. That's why I created this. So you can see these items moving as well. Put the intro before it, put the chorus before the verse, and all the items in that section get moved. Now right now, they're all perfectly sized, but they don't have to be. If we made this verse smaller, let's put this over here, and let's make the verse this size. Now if we move just this section over here, all the items in this section are going to be split and then moved. So let's move it over to here. And notice all those items were split and moved over here. And what was left were these two pieces here, which were on the sides before and after. Now we could also duplicate our regions. So verse one can also be before the intro but still be over here. So on the PC, hold on Control. On the Mac, hold on Command and drag it over. And it makes a copy. This is now region four, but it's all the same items from verse one. So we have another verse starting our song, going into our intro, going back to another verse, going to our chorus. Let's do the same thing with our chorus. Let's put an extra chorus over here. Hold on the modifier, drag it over, and it adds an extra chorus over here. We still have this one over here, but we're changing the arrangement of our song. And of course, the media items are going with it. So it's a great way of doing song arrangement on the fly, just by moving the regions around. Put this over here, or put it back, or duplicate it to the beginning. So it's very helpful for arranging or rearranging our song or project. Let's undo all that. Now, one other thing I should mention, if we right click over here to edit our region, we can go right to the region manager. Or we could choose it over here under view. We could go to the region marker manager right here. And this looks like this. Here's our intro, verse one, and chorus one. We could rename them by double clicking them, change their color a lot quicker right from here. Change the start and the end length. But one of my favorite features is if we double click right in the number right here, it scrolls to that whole region. So the screen expands to just the size of that region. Let's do it with region two. All we see is region two or region three. So it's a great way of working on one section at a time. And it makes it a lot easier to navigate. 
Want to work on the intro? Double click it. All we see is the intro, the verse, or the chorus. And we're ready to go just on that section. So that's pretty much it. That's the markers and regions in Reaper. Let's move on. Ah!